have a couple announcements I would like to make. I have not officially thanked everybody that took care of VBS this year and Corey for uh, heading that up for us and doing it on such short notice and did such a good job. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody that participated and helped, thank you. I want to welcome our visitors and our members and just I'm glad to see everybody here this morning. Uh, we got Brother Joseph from India coming into town. I'm picking him up uh, Wednesday, rightly? Uh, Wednesday at 2.55 uh, at the airport. He's coming in from Dallas. He's been down to, in Dallas for a couple of weeks. He's going to be here until August 28th, and then he might come back in September. He's not leaving the country. He's going to stay, I think, through September. But uh, August 19th, uh, Mark's going to pick him up at my house and take him to a, a Christian uh, prayer meeting, so to speak, out in Franklin. Uh, he's, uh, there's going to be several churches there, and uh, they're going to serve breakfast and then have a song service, have ministry and prayer, and then barbecue lunch. So Mark picked a good day to take him to go and... Uh, but what I'd like to ask is I'm going to have him uh, at my house, and we're going to be hosting him. But if you would like to hang out with him a day, take him uh, with you and let him meet some people, uh, we'd really appreciate that. He would He's here to meet people and just to relax uh, for a little bit because, I mean, the man definitely, uh, he worked while we was there all the time, and he worked, I mean, at first, to be honest, I listened to uh, all the reports about COVID and stuff, and so we, we complied and did what we was told and asked to do. And, you know, I was wondering how he was making out because they didn't have vaccines and stuff in India, and he was still out feeding the hungry and going to the leper colonies and, and just living, you know, uh, his faith strong. And uh, anyway... Whether you do or don't, if you do, you'll receive a blessing. If you don't, you'll just miss a blessing of getting to know Joseph and being able to spend some time with him. But anyway, those are the dates if you want more information. Now, today's lesson, to be quite honest, I'm a little concerned about today's lesson. And, and the reason being is it could be either very short or for very long and uh so i'm not i'm not sure we'll just let the holy spirit lead and we'll see where it goes if you will those of you who keep notes you're gonna say well that's what you did two weeks ago i know turn to luke chapter five we're gonna preach it again because obviously you didn't hear it the first time no i'm kidding <clears throat> Now, I want you to draw the picture. This is, there's many different names. This is the Sea of Galilee. This is uh, the Sea of Tiberias. This is uh, uh, the Lake of Gennesaret. Chapter 5, verse 1. This is at the beginning of his ministry. All right. It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And we covered this. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, Simon Peter, that is, and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which was in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so they be both that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished 
and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed them. And that's what I want you to, to look. Jesus said, Fear not, from henceforth you're going to catch men. You're going to be fishers of men. All right? So now they start this ministry with Jesus Christ. Because it says they left all, forsook all. They, they just walked away. Uh, that great catch, their boats, and they started following Jesus. Amazing, ain't it? What would it take for a person in today's time to do such a thing as that? Be difficult, to say the least. Don't be deceived. It was difficult for those men to do the same. Why? They had families. They had bills to pay. They had responsibilities. And they, they walk. They forsook it. And followed after Jesus. Now, if you will, go to John 21. They've walked with Jesus. Jesus taught them. They've been with Jesus for three plus years. All right? He's told them, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. This, this is what you're going to do. Remember, you're going to be fishers of men. This is how it's going to be. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. I'm going to be resurrected in three days. Well, right before he did that, Peter denied him. Peter's not feeling so good about himself and his walk with Christ. You know what I mean? In, in Matthew, they were told to go to Galilee and to what? Wait on me. Okay? So, this is all that's transpired. Here's where we're at, and this is where we're picking up in John 21. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Okay, that's Galilee. Sea of Galilee. All right? And was on, on this wise showed he himself. They were together, Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana, and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. There's a bunch of reasons why. What was he? By trade, he was a fisherman. The ministry is over. They're told to wait. They're probably needing money. They're probably needing food. Because the ministry ain't producing nothing right now. They don't have Christ necessarily with them at the moment. You know, Christ is the one that's been providing for them. This was maybe too... Peter, the bigger picture here, is Peter I'll never deny you and he denied him once, twice, three times you know remember he's the only one that jumped out of the boat to walk on the water Remember, he's the one that grabbed the sword and struck the servant's ear. I mean, he's ready to die that night up until they actually confronted him. And he confirmed everything that Jesus said. You're going to deny me three times. So he's down and he says, look, I'm going fishing. What I'm getting at is, he forgot the words Jesus said at the beginning of the ministry, didn't he? He forgot all that he learned. He said to tell them to go there and to wait, but they're not waiting. He's returning to what he knows. Might be many reasons to do that. But you've got to be careful. Because your influence, even when you're out of the will of God for the moment, influences everybody that's around you. Has a bearing on everybody around you. Because he says, I'm going fishing. What does his, his friends and partners say? They said unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into the ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Yeah. 
you can know what to do and the right things to do it, but if it's not the right timing and it's not God's will, it's going to pro provide you nothing. Remember, what were they told they were going to be catchers of? They're not seeking men. They're seeking what? Food. <laughs> They're seeking money. What were they trained to do? What has the Word of God trained you to do? And what do you keep going back to? I know all through the years of ministry, Every time it gets tough or I want to give up. Most of you know what I always talk about. I'll just get my driver's license back and go back to driving a truck. I go a fishing. Well, that would be so far out of God's will, wouldn't it? <clears throat> so Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said, I'm going with you. And when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. How many men is in the boat? Seven. And they cannot pull the net of fish in. I, I, I'm just, I know when there's two or three, there's a lot of strength there in manpower. Seven, and they can't get it in. Now remember, at the beginning of the ministry, when they did that, it didn't tell how many fish they caught but it was a multitude that their nets was breaking. And he called for his partner in the other boat to come over to help get it to shore. Here, they cast it for, now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked. And that doesn't mean nudity, it means he was in his undergarment. And he but he put his outer garment on and tied it up and cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship for where they were not far from land, but it's about 200 cubits, that's about 100 yards, dragging the net with the fishes. And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Now, we read this and we don't really think about it. They're hungry. They're fishing to have something to eat. Their need was already met by Christ. There's a fire to warm after a night on the, the cool lake, you know. There's bread. He tells them to bring the fish over that he provided for them because they caught what? In the night, the net didn't break. But here's, here's one miracle right here in itself. How many men was in the boat that couldn't lift the net? What's this next thing say? In verse 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. <laughs> Peter just grabbed it and pulled it on up on the shore. And what does it say? And a hundred and fifty-three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Now, we'll stop here. This is that peculiar part of the lesson where it might go a long time, it might be short time. <clears throat> the Jamantre, the, the hundred and fifty-three, uh, they've looked throughout time, and, and people's had controversy over this number. Now, Jerome, I had to look him up. Jerome uh, is, is best known uh, as the man that translated the Bible out of the, 
Greek into the Latin. Uh, Jerome, his numbers, uh, he's, according to his time when he was alive, they considered to have 153 different species of fish in there. So the 153 different species of fish represented all of humanity, all that was going to be saved was caught in the gospel drag net and the net did not break and they did not lose one. But also, Bullinger wrote a book, Numbers in Scripture, and I would urge you, it's not an easy read, it's not a real fun read, but man, it is a very powerful read. He lived and died in the 1800s, and uh, he gives understanding to numbers and letters. You know, uh, in the Bible's original text, letters represented numbers. And to get 153 to come out right, they've done a bunch of different looks, and what they came up with was sons of God. Ben ha elam. All right? You take sons of God in the original text, ben, ben ha b-e-n-h-a elam, sons of God, and the numbers come up to each letter. When you add up the letters, from that phrase comes up to 153. Now I will bring, I'm working on, I will bring a printout of the book uh, that has all, why that is so important here. Uh, The number is significant. Is that the number that makes it so significant? I mean, is that the phrase? I'm not 100% sure of, but look what it says here. You know, if it wasn't that important, it would be like what we, we read in Luke where there was a great catch of fish, you know, or 150 fish or 120 fish. Why is the 153 there? I think it actually works as the gospel net, so to speak. He's trying to get, remind Peter what he's to be catching. All right? Because who is Peter, in all honesty, out of the bunch of the apostles? And to Paul comes on the scene, he's the man, ain't he? He's the one <laughs> that takes the left foot out of his mouth and puts the right foot in, right? But he's the one that's always moving too, ain't he? He's the one that actually uh, said, look, while we're waiting, let's go and draw straws. We need another apostle to replace a Judas, you know, and, and he helped draw the lots to, to get Matthew involved. But we know that God had in mind Saul, later known as Paul, to be the, the apostle. Uh, he penned most of the, the New Testament for us. But In verse 11, So Simon went up and drew the, the net to the land full of great fishes, 153, and for there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh, and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself unto his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. So, here he is, and so now Peter's brought the fish in. Jesus... Always with Jesus, all of our needs are always met, physical and spiritual. And usually the physical before the spiritual. Because it tells us over in James that why tell your brother to go, go and be well and to prosper when he's hungry? If you don't give him something for his belly, he can't hear the spiritual for his belly growling. You know, we have to meet people in their physical needs in order to help them with their spiritual needs. So Jesus said, come and dine. He had a fire already prepared for him. He had bread laid out, and he took the fish and prepared it for him. So now they're eating. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, you realize what he didn't call him? 
Petrus, calling him by his first name that he called him from the beginning, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest, and that word lovest there, Christ is using agape. Lovest thou me, or agapus, thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto them, Feed my lambs. And this is the, the young sheep. Feed them. Okay? He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he still uses agapius, agape. And he said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. But both these times, Peter is using filio. It's a less strong word of love. I like, you know. I like you. I'm with you. He said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I filio thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. All right? The older sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest, and here Christ used in the original text, filio. He comes down to Peter's level. You filio me. And he said to him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I filio thee. Jesus said unto them, Feed my sheep. And this one, uh, I don't remember the word for it, but it means feed my mature sheep. So the whole process is the young sheep, the more aged sheep, and then the leader sheep. And verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whether thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another should gird thee and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This he spoke, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which was also leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it to thee? Follow thou me. All right, so then, of course, that they, some said, well, Jesus said John was going to live till he came back, you know, but that's, uh, he's, he's not getting that. What he was wanting Peter to see, this is what I want us to see. When you mess up, Christ forgives you. He will restore you if you ask him to forgive you. He is faithful and just. Why is he faithful? Because Jesus died on the cross. And he's justified in doing that because Jesus died on the cross. And he will always forgive you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He supplies all of our needs. When you're hungry, he feeds you. If you're cold, he'll give you warmth. All right. We see all this right here. We see that Peter was distraught. Have you ever messed up in your walk with the Lord so bad that you couldn't hold your head up? I know people that should be here with us now that can't do that because they don't understand that Jesus forgives them. But they know that people know that they've messed up. And so they're too ashamed to church with us even though Christ has forgiven them, just like He forgave you. Now, what I was wanting to do with this lesson was why I said I, I didn't know how long this may or may not go. Have you recently denied Christ to the part that you're ashamed? And have you been waiting for that moment, that right moment to repent? See, sometimes we forget and we go back to what we are associated with or what we know because we know nothing else to do. I go a fishing, you know. 
And he, he walked away from the ministry that the Lord had called him to. When God saved you, he put you into a ministry. And you know, everybody always wants to think it's the preacher. Well, the preacher is called. No, 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 no. When you got saved, you was called. You were called. <clears throat> and we allow our failure to take us from what we know we are called and we go back to our old way of life. And that's where, Anthony, we was talking about it this morning. That's what scares me. That's why that doctrine of once saved, always saved, I hate that saying because people really think that I believe in eternal salvation, but you just can't say a prayer and then live like hell. If it, had, if it doesn't change your physical life, none whatsoever, I don't think it changes your spiritual destination. But we cannot allow our guilt feelings to let it drive us back away from God. We need to turn to God. And He meets our needs if we'll turn to Him. And this is what kind of ties in, and this is what I was talking about at the end of Sunday school this morning. Uh, Isaac was telling me yesterday, and I've not studied it all the way out, and, and, but it makes so much sense. Adam and Eve, who was created first? Adam. All right. Then God took and brought all the creatures of the world in front of Adam and and Adam named him. That's an elephant. That's a giraffe. That's a well. And when they went through everything, what does it say? They didn't find a helper suitable for Adam. He named everything. When was the law given to Adam not to eat off the tree of knowledge of good and evil? At the very beginning when he was there, right? Who was not there? Eve. But since they couldn't find a, a helper suitable, God put Adam to sleep, took the rib out, created Eve. But now he says, woman, right? You know, we, all right. And says, woman, God said, don't eat off that tree. You can eat off anything but that tree. So Satan comes up. He says, Eve, did God say? You shouldn't eat off the tree. What I'm wanting you to see is there's a difference between first-hand knowledge and second-hand knowledge. And this is what I was getting at. You don't need a preacher to tell you God's Word. That's second-hand. You need to read and pray and let God lead you through the Holy Spirit to what the truth is. And then when you come here, if, if I'm listening to God, I should be giving you a reaffirming word of what God has been talking to you about. And you would know. See, since I think Eve hadn't heard the word of God, if that's as far as that goes, Adam was the one that had told her. She says, well, I don't know, did God say? Or was that just Adam didn't want me to eat off that tree because then I'd know what Adam knows. I don't know. But see, see how things are. So what I'm getting at is the Word of God, you need, to have, you need a relationship with Him. And when He gives you this relationship and saves you, there's a walk that He wants you to do. And if we're not careful, when we mess up, we're going to do like Peter. And what did Peter do? Did he go back to what Jesus told him to do? He went back to what he was doing when? Prior to Jesus. What does it say in Proverbs? The pig does what? Well, the pig goes back to the mire, right? And the dog goes back to the vomit. What you have prior to Christ is filth. 
，来唱，唱。And when we forget what he called us to do, we go waller and consume that filth again. That's simple. Jesus is asking you this morning the same thing he asked Simon, son of Jonas. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Well, do you? Feed my sheep. And even the third time, Jesus will ask you, Do you love me? And feed my sheep. You don't feed his sheep here. You see, each of us have this walk where we're supposed to be attracting people to Christ. I'm not trying to build a church here. I'm trying to build the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. And that's what each of us should be doing. Our concern should be for humanity that does not know Jesus Christ. We should be about evangelizing the world, not indoctrinating them to be good church members. Because there's church members that's going to bust hell wide open because they don't know Jesus Christ. Johnny, I need you. Jesus is saying to you this morning, do you love me? Well, Lord, you know I love... Do you really love me? Well, Lord, you know I go to church and I try. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. What do you mean, feed my sheep? Live a life that's worth being called. Can I dare say that word, Christian? We don't need to be camouflaged no more. It's time that the light lets the light shine. If you have something that is hindering you from the catching of men or doing your work that God's called you to do, would you please come up? and repent and ask God to, to use you to glorify Himself. If you want me to pray with you, come over here. If you want to pray alone, go over there and meet with God this morning. Of course, you can pray in your seat, but I've always found it feels more like I've went to God when I get up and get down on my knees somewhere and, and talk with the Lord, but that's between you and Him. Would you please stand to your feet? Brother Johnny. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me. Master